Mark Dubowitz is chief executive of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, where he leads the Iran program. Welcome. Good to see you again. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Paul. So let's uh, start with the European statement this week. How significant is it uh, a, a toward, about Iran policy? Well, I think it's very significant. I mean, as, as you know, and the viewers know, the Europeans have been opposing the Trump policy of walking away from the Iran deal and imposing maximum pressure. But because of the Iranian strikes against the Saudi oil facilities, which really is an attack on global energy supplies on which the world depends, they are moving closer to the president's position. And I think this is a, a reminder to the Iranians that they will be increasingly isolated if they continue their malign activities. So this basically takes off the table any of the ideas of providing tax credits that the French president had had for Iran uh, to help them get over sanctions. But what needs to happen now from the Europeans if we really want to continue to pressure Iran? What, 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 what should they do next? Well, I actually think, Paul, they're going to continue to try to convince President Trump to offer sanctions relief in some form. Oh, okay. And yeah, I think the French are not going to give up on this. They've floated this idea of a $15 billion credit facility that the Iranians can draw down on, which needs U.S. permission in order to operate. I think they'll continue to try to push this idea to give the Iranians sanctions relief to come back to the table. But I think what the Europeans really need to do is send a stark warning to the Iranians that if they continue escalating on the nuclear side, the, the Europeans are going to walk away from the nuclear deal. And if they continue striking at global energy resources and, and infrastructure, the Europeans are going to snap back their own sanctions. Is the president uh, likely to take that, uh, that invitation from the, from, the, from the French even after the strike in the oil facility? I mean, the president was looking to to really talk to Rouhani, Hassan Rouhani, the president of Iran, at this uh, U.N. meeting, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It's a good thing it didn't happen. And I, I certainly don't think that the president is going to allow himself to be blackmailed by the regime in Iran uh, and offer them billions of dollars for merely the, the opportunity to come back to the table. So I, I hope the president sticks to his guns and makes it very clear that unless Iran comes back to the table to negotiate a comprehensive agreement based on the president's terms, then the maximum pressure campaign is going to intensify. I was at a media breakfast this week with Rouhani, uh, with several members of the, of, of the press, and he was asked about uh, uh, negotiations with Trump, and he said, we will not negotiate as long until, uh, unless, the sanctions are lifted. Uh, of course, if you lift the sanctions, then they have less incentive to cooperate. So is, 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 do you think, do you see any bend in the Iranian position from here? I see some bend because I think the Iranians recognize that they're facing imminent economic collapse. And the it's sanctions... that bad. You really, now, yeah, that's a fairly forceful statement. Imminent economic collapse? Yeah, I think the Iranians are in the situation where they're running out of foreign exchange reserves. They're not going to have the money to pay for imports that they need to run their factories. With factories closing, they're going to have massive unemployment. And so they, their situation is getting worse every day. And I think the administration, with a few moves, could actually bring about that kind of economic collapse, which will then put the regime in a position where it'll have to choose between negotiations and the survival of its regime. Now, one of those actions is so-called snapback sanctions, which were part of the original uh, 2015 deal in, in there. But that involves the United Nations, does it not? To explain how that would work and what it would mean. So the way it works is under the Obama nuclear deal, the one good thing that the president uh, negotiated at the time, it was a unilateral snapback, the ability of the United States to unilaterally snap back UN sanctions against opposition from Russia, China, or even Europe. So the United States can still move unilaterally to snap back those UN sanctions. And that's important because it would bring back all the Security Council resolutions. It would force the Europeans to have to comply with uh, these UN sanctions and, and Asian countries. And it would isolate Iran politically, but also it would do something, Paul, very important. There's still about $5 billion worth of Iranian-European trade this year. If you could shut down $5 billion worth of trade, then you're essentially in the position that I suggested earlier, where they can't buy essential goods from the Germans and the Italians and the, and the Dutch that they need to run their economy, sophisticated machinery uh, that they need for their factories. You get rid of 5 billion euros of trade, and you're putting Iran closer to that position of economic collapse. Just so, just so I understand, it, it, this, this unilateral decision, if the, uh, just one country, the United States, could call for the snapback, it couldn't be vetoed by China, couldn't be vetoed by Russia and other Security Council members? 
That's correct. It's, it's a unilateral snapback against the opposition of, of those countries. I think the Obama administration at the time wisely understood they were never going to get Chinese and Russian support, so they negotiated a unilateral snapback. Now, some are saying the United States can't do that alone because the United States has walked away from the JCPOA. I, that is not the administration's uh, position in terms of the legal interpretation of that snapback. And I guess the question is, if you're talking about maximum pressure, why hasn't the administration done this so far? Well, I think the administration is, uh, there's an internal debate about whether this is the time to impose that snapback. Because essentially, when you impose that snapback, the Iranians walk away from the nuclear deal. Everybody walks away from the nuclear deal. It's dead and it's buried. And then you've got to deal with uh, the fallout from that. And part of the fallout would be continued Iranian nuclear escalation. You've got to be prepared for that. All right. Thank you, Mark Dubowitz. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks,